I was raised Catholic, so this is a pretty hilarious story to me. Pope Francis reportedly denies the existence of hell. Vatican panics. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't, you know, people have made this point. He, oh, okay, he's a more progressive pope, but still overall he's not really progressive because he said some fucked up things about a variety of issues. But yeah, every now and then he drops a bomb like this. Like on, on homosexuality, he said like, who am I to judge? <laughs> That's pretty funny that he's supposed to be like this rigid um, religious leader. And he's like, whatevs, bro, who am I to judge? Um, but on hell, even I was surprised by this one. And what do you say about atheists? Like, oh, they can get into heaven or something like that. But now he's saying, now he's denying the existence of hell. Now, I got to give you the backstory of this. It's a little more complicated than that. Apparently, he was doing an interview with like a well-known atheist uh, reporter. And the way that this guy writes the interviews down is he doesn't do it verbatim. He doesn't take notes while Pope Francis is talking or while anybody's talking, whoever he's interviewing. He has a conversation with a person and then later on tries to remember what they said. Seems a little questionable. Seems like this guy does have an agenda um, and it seems like the way he uh, you know, writes down his reports are, that's just not trustworthy. It's just not. Um, but at the same time, What's interesting is Pope Francis, and they point this out in the article on Vox about this, Pope Francis has repeatedly done interviews with this guy. And this guy has allegedly, in the past, kind of misquoted him. But Pope Francis keeps sitting down for interviews with this guy. And so the theory is, Pope Francis is significantly more, um, you know, progressive than, obviously, than the traditional Catholic hierarchy, for sure. But... He knows the limits of what he's what he can get away with and can't get away with. So what he's doing is this thing that leaves him plausible deniability, where he goes to this atheist reporter who will write down for him uh, and quote him what he really believes and what he really wants to say. But then when that reporter releases this to the public, the Vatican turns around and goes, Whoa! Why, I never! No, of course hell is real! Absolutely! And then Pope Francis goes, Oh, he misquoted me. And then, you know, it's a way of him, it's a way for him to get out there the progressive ideas that he wants to get out there, while at the same time being able to turn to the establishment in the Vatican, because the Vatican is a bureaucracy like any government. And if he loses standing in the Vatican, as in the other, whatever they're called, bishops or higher-ups there, uh, where they're like, we don't have faith in this guy anymore, that's not, that's bad. So he wants to be able to say the progressive things without having to own up to it in the sense that, you know, it goes down on the historical record and the Vatican cops to those ideas. Like, the Vatican is not just going to come out and say, hell's not real. So he wants to get that idea out there while being the Pope, but then also be able to turn to the people in the Vatican and go, I didn't say that. It was this fucking untrustworthy atheist reporter. So I don't know. I think that's a pretty interesting story. And it shows you how the Vatican works in the same way like a fucking government would work and the same way any bureaucracy works where the guy's trying to play this game, almost this Machiavellian kind of tightrope walking where he's calculating every move. Um, so let me give you what they, what this reporter says his exact quote was. He says, They are not punished. Those who repent obtain God's forgiveness and take their place among the ranks of those who contemplate him. But those who do not repent and cannot be forgiven disappear. A hell doesn't exist. The disappearance of sinning souls exists. Hmm. So in other words, if you you just stop existing when you die, if you didn't, you know, turn your life over to Jesus and repent. But if you did turn your life over to Jesus and repent, then you go to the, you know, the nightclub in, in space, w which is heaven, which is, you know, you and Jesus and Elvis hang out on clouds and shit and have a good time. It's so silly how, like, the progressive version of religion is like, okay, let's make the fairy tales less, um, fucked up. <laughs> like, we're still gonna have fairy tales, let's be honest, but let's just make them, like, more happy-go-lucky. Or you could reject the fairy tales completely. Here's my hunch. When you die, you stop existing in both cases, whether you repented or whether you didn't repent. You just stop existing. That seems to me to be most likely, you know? If you look at... If you look at the world in 1987, I didn't exist yet. I was born in 1988, January 31st, 1988. So exactly how I felt in 1987 is how I'll feel 
the day I die. After I die, it'll feel like I felt in 1987. I don't feel anything. I just don't exist. <laughs> so, I don't know. I guess that idea scares a lot of people. So, they don't want nothingness forever. Um, but if there's nothingness, it, it, there's nothing to fear because there's nothing, literally nothing there. So there's nothing to fear because fear doesn't exist because you don't exist. So I don't know, but there are people who are scared of that idea. But what the Pope is saying is, hey, if you didn't repent and you die, you just stop existing. So it's a different version of hell. And in the article in Vox, they also go on to explain how this isn't really a new theological idea. Because everybody knows when it comes to religion, any religion really, there's more progressive branches of that religion and more conservative branches of that religion. There's more fundamentalist and literalist branches and there's more, you know, um, mythological storytelling kinds of versions of it. And that has been, in Christian doctrine, that has been one ideological strain. It wasn't always the idea that, oh, when you die, if you were bad, you go to hell. There, was, there were other people who argued theologically, no, 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 what really happens is when you die, if you were bad, you don't exist anymore. That's hell. He so in other words, hell isn't the opposite of God. Hell is just the absence of God. So there's no God, you just don't exist. But Catholic doctrine today states, hell is the opposite of God, it's the devil, and you're tortured for eternity in hell. Isn't it crazy? Like, it's viewed as scandalous that the head of the Catholic Church is saying you won't be tortured in eternity if you don't turn your life over to God. So the official doctrine of the Catholic Church is every single Jewish person in the world, every single Hindu person, every single Muslim, every single atheist will burn in hellfire for eternity. You'll be tortured for infinity. And if you say, I don't know about that, man, they go, oh, scandalous, how dare you fucking argue with my obviously airtight argument that you'll just be tortured for eternity. So it's just, what a silly thing we're doing. So I guess this is a positive thing he's doing. I mean, it's just, I feel like humanity in many ways has evolved so much further beyond religion, but at the same time, we're coexisting with the idea of religion. And it's funny watching like the arm wrestle between more progressive elements in religion and traditional religion, but it's also funny watching the arm wrestling between the secular world and the Enlightenment and science and religious thinking. Um, progressive religion is better than conservative religion, duh. Ideally, we move beyond religion, but hey, as long as you're preaching good ideas, then uh, it's all good. But it's just funny that <laughs> he's bugging orthodoxy, but he has to do it in a Machiavell Machiavellian way, because if he doesn't, then his power will be totally undermined because the Vatican is just like any other human institution. It ain't holy. <laughs>